Hello, my crafty friends. It's Andrea from Prairie Sky DIY on this beautiful Saturday morning. Um, happy April Fool's Day. It is the my seventh annual uh, No Fool and It's Free April Fool's class. Um, we're going to be making two cards today. If you registered for the class, you got the prep sheet if you would like to craft along. Um, if you didn't register but you would like the prep sheet, uh, comment on the video um, or click the registration link that is associated with this broadcast um, and I will get it to you. After the class, I will be sending along the PDF uh, with the step-by-step -step instructions of what I did. So one more slug of coffee and then we'll get started. All right, so we are going to be using Taco Fiesta, which is in the mini catalog. Um, it's the first time I've used this, so I am going to show you some best practices for using a photopolymer, which is the clear stamp sets the very first time you take them out of the package. Now the sun is just in a weird angle right now. It will change a little bit as we get moving. Excuse me for just one second. It's springtime. It's allergy season. Anyway, uh, we are going to get started. So two cards. The first one that we're going to be doing um, put those on my computer so I don't forget. Hey, Diane, I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget, if you are watching, please allow StreamYard access so I can see who's commenting. If not, all I see is um, Facebook user or YouTube user. Anyway, our first card is going to be a clean and simple card. We've got, and I will be offering a few tips to kind of fancy it up a little bit as well. Um, we've got your standard card base. I'm using basic white. And we've got a three by three inch piece of basic white as well. Now for this one, um, I planned the card. I didn't actually plan what I was using. Huh. And April Fool, where is my stamp block? There we go. And here I thought I was being all prepared, knowing where everything was, but no, it's never that easy. All right, here's our chip bowl. So this is going to be a clean and simple card. Um, stamp with memento. Now the first time you use a new photopolymer stamp, um, I like to just stamp it off to the side just to make sure that you're going to get a really good clear impression. Because sometimes there's stuff left over um, from the manufacturing process and you don't really get a super good impression. You might need to rub it over with um, an eraser or just give it a quick little wash. All right, so we've got that. And then that's not the taco bowl. That's the burrito. Or what is that? Yeah, that's a burrito, not a taco bowl. All right, well, we're going to make a burrito with some guac instead then. And then, yeah, that works. Roll, we'll go with the flow. You never know what's going to happen around here. And then, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Now, I am going to keep this one fairly clean and simple. But, if you wanted to, you could stamp around on our white base with the other images and then just go around in color. These ones I'm going to be coloring with our 
our pencils. In. Let's see what color. It's a good burrito color. Crushed curry, maybe. And then we'll do a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and Cajun craze for our bowl. All right. It is so warm in my craft room today. I have got the windows completely open. I absolutely love the watercolor pencils for coloring. Okay, and then guacamole, we'll do a few different shades and just kind of blend them in. Old olive. I think once upon a time there was a guacamole or an avocado green. I'm not really certain. That was before my time. Okay, and then we'll get our crushed curry. It's really light for our burrito. I can't believe I thought that that was a guacamole bowl. Oh my goodness. Not quite awake yet. I'm going to do just a little bit of lettuce and blender pin. Where are you? I usually keep them on my desk and of course I can't find one right now. Well, if we can't, oh, here we go. If you can't find a blender pen um, to blend your watercolor pencils, you can always use Wink of Stella. I need to add a little bit of brown into this, I think. Looks a little too yellow. Um, if you can't find a blender pen or you don't have a blender pen, you can also use Wink of Stella or a watercolor pencil. Thank you, Diane. I thought you would know what the colors were. All right. The watercolor pencils make super quick work of coloring. One thing to remember is when you're blending your colors, you want to move it off um, and get the first color off before you move to the second color, or there will be a little bit of cross-contamination, which isn't always a bad thing if they're close. Um, but if you're working with a light color, then move to a dark color and then move back to a light color, it can be a bit of a problem. All right, so there's our super quick first card. I'm actually going to move this down a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Because we've got some funky shadows happening at the moment. Actually, there. So our coloring is done. We're just going to grab our dimensionals, flip this guy over. And like I said, this is going to be a really quick, simple card. So we're doing tone on tone. Actually, just give me one second. I'm going to turn the camera off 
and see if I can fix this lighting situation. I have a gigantic window in my craft room, which I absolutely love. Yeah, that didn't fix anything. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit problematic when I'm filming in the morning. All right. Turn the camera back on and then we'll make the best of what we've got. Um, so now I'm going to grab my take your pick tool and add our gems. Oops. I like odd numbers, so I'm just going to do probably five. Yeah, I think we need a little bit more. It's a birthday card after all. There. So there's our first card done. It's not spectacular in the shade. It's much better in the sun. Um, so now we're going to get moving on to number two. And I'm actually going to bring a lamp in for this one. Just because... It might make it a, make, might make the shadows a little bit less. Yeah, not really. All right. Okay, so our next one we've got, we're doing a triple stamp. It's been a while since I've done this. <coughs> Excuse me. So our cut sizes, which I also carefully had written down. Okay, there. Um, you can use whatever color of cardstock that you want because I was using the taco thing I decided that I was going to use uh, pear pizzazz as my color and basic white for my stamping layer so our pear pizzazz layers we've got the card base then we need a three and a quarter by four and a half and a two and a quarter by three and a half and our basic white is five and a quarter by four uh, for Hold on. Four by five and a quarter, three by four and a quarter, and two by three and a quarter. So it goes in by um, one inch each time. The very first time I did one of these cards, it took a little bit for me to wrap my head around what was going on. Um, but it's really cool when you've got it finished. So this piece, I'm actually going to stamp the horse on. So I'm going to do that first and then we'll do everything else. Of course, I guess it's not a horse, it's a pinata. All right. And then these guys I'm going to color with our Stampin' Blends. Now, um, because you do want things to line up fairly decently, um, just add a little bit of adhesive to the back and then center-ish on the layers. You don't want to put too much adhesive on this section um, because you will be taking it apart after. So I'm going to do the um, cactus. Oh my gosh. The words are leaving me today. Uh, we'll do the cactus, the pepper, and the sombrero for this one. And don't worry too much about things not lining up perfectly because they're not going to. Oh, grab the pepper by accident on that one.
The good thing about the photopolymer stamps is you can see if you don't have it perfectly inked. That guy. And we'll do three peppers. And I'll just fill in a little bit with the sombrero. And again, you don't have to worry about perfect stamping because we have layers to cover that. Okay, we are done with our ink. We'll grab our blends and start coloring. Old olive for our cactus. Um, red peppers. And you know what, we'll bring in some pinks and some blues as well. Maybe a little bit of Bermuda Bay. And red of navy? Yeah. It's all me blue. Um, and one more green for the top of our peppers. And... sombrero. All right. And now we just color. And again, we're not too worried about perfection here because if there's a something that happens on the edge, it will be covered by a layer. Now this technique can be as fussy or as simple as you want it to be really. Um, if you had a background stamp or a solid image stamp and that's all you wanted to do with it and just have it um, as the layers and leave it as a black and white card, that would be so pretty. Um, it would be fun to complete the card and send it to somebody as a coloring project as well, especially if they love to color. I've done that a few times with um, Christmas cards for kids. It was a little bit basic, but then they could color in as they chose. All right, so then we're going to do our light cherry cobbler. It's kind of pink. Well, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's a little too pink. Um, Dark cherry cobbler it is. I don't know. Are you a fan of spicy? I love salsa, but not the super spicy stuff. Homemade is the best. The only tricky bit with the coloring on this one um, is where the card stop ends and connects to the next one. And again, it doesn't matter 
if the edges aren't perfect because it will be covered. And this is such, I don't know, this technique is so much fun to do. It looks really impressive, but it's really quite simple when you break it down. Hi, Rose. I hope you're having a good day. Well, I'm glad it's raining there and not snowing. I was talking to friends in Nova Scotia earlier this week and uh, noticed that it was a little not so spectacular. We're supposed to be in for some snow later this week. Hope not too much. March break is ending here. Back to school, back to routines, back to everything for Monday. So I have a feeling it's going to be a bit of a tough go as we've been totally embracing March break over here. I got slightly out of alignment. I'll fix that. Really, the longest part for this card is going to be the coloring. I actually really like this card or this stamp set. I wasn't sure. And then uh, somebody else wanted it. I actually borrowed this one from one of my team members. So I wasn't sure about it. Now I think I'm kind of needing it. Oh, I forgot to do the tops of our peppers. I'll have to go back and do that in a second. I always miss something when I'm coloring. Oh, this one, um, it's just layers, Rose. You can click the link um, and I'll send you the PDF and the prep sheet. But the Pear Pizzazz is a card base layer. Um, three and a quarter by five and a half and two and a quarter by three and a half. And the white here is four by five and a quarter, three by four and a quarter, and two by three and three quarters. Um, and then I just stuck a little bit of adhesive to layer it up so that I could do this. But we are going to take it apart um, after I'm done coloring and assemble it. That is awesome. It's funny how we don't do um, techniques for a really long time. And then all of a sudden it's out of the blue, either made new by somebody who's just joined our team um, or it pops up in our Facebook feed or something. It's like, oh, I haven't done that for a while. I need to try it again. I love sharing creative ideas with everybody. It's so much fun. All right, we are doing uh, SU 600. This is one of the neutrals for the blends. I absolutely love these tones. They're, um, they range from very, very light pink to a very, very dark brown. All right, this, this part's going to be a little tricky where there's little bits of detail, but 
We'll make it work. I love the bullet end for these little fine bits. I can't believe it's April 1st. This year is already flying. We're on the countdown to our trailer opening. Kids are on the countdown to summer break so that they can spend pretty much their entire life at the beach. I'm counting down to the new catalog starting. Um, if you're in Canada and don't currently have a demonstrator and would like a catalog, pop a message in the comments and let me know. Um, and I will get in contact with you or you can send me a message on Facebook uh, with your address and as soon as I get them, I will send them your way. Okay, this is Bermuda Bay. This is one of our colors that's retiring. I'm so sad. I absolutely love it. But Coastal Cabana is close. So it's not the end of the world. And some of the new colors that are coming are so pretty. Okay, this one is Melon. Nope, light real red. It definitely looks pink today. It's all good. It all works together. It's a good thing about the pinata, right? It doesn't matter. Any color works, any color goes. And I do know that, uh, or I do realize that I've left the tail. I'm going to pull in the color that we used for the sombrero. And this one is SU 400 which is a little bit darker. So the higher the number, the lighter the color. I guess I could have made this tail rainbow as well, but it's fine. All right. So now we've got our coloring done. Our card is ready to go. So we're going to bring in our pear pizzazz layers and then we're just going to layer it up to disassemble. And reassemble. So layer one. I'm going to move my camera up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. All right. So we've got layer one. The pair of pizzazzes. Oh, that's the right size. It seemed really tall. Okay, so a pair of pizzazz. And you want to make sure that you can see a little bit of everything around the edges. And we're going to do layer number two of our to see friends and you want to make sure that it's kind of lined up ish then we're going to do our next layer of pear pizzazz You want to make sure that any bits that you have um, that aren't perfectly stamped are going to be covered. This is great too because you can tweak the layers just a little bit so that if you did something that you don't quite love, you can hide it just a little bit. And then we're going to do the same with this guy and just make sure that everything's kind of lined up. 
and there's our card. Now we are going to add some blingy things. Um, I have some different blingy things around. I wonder where they went. My craft desk is a bit of a hot mess at the moment. I've got so many projects on the go um, and ideas and it's a little insane. Um, you know what? We are going to grab classic matte dots, but we are going to customize them. So we've got that, and then we'll do our dark cherry cobbler. These only take a couple of seconds to dry when you color them with the blends. If you don't have um, blends, you can also use another type of permanent marker. That one's a little light, but it'll work. I just had my take your pick. Where'd you go? There it is, right in front of my face, and I didn't even see it. Okay, and then we're just going to add our little bits of bling. Oops. Um, it's going to get very warm in my craft room shortly. And one of my favorite tips, come on, with the take your pick tool is when you start the putty, um, especially if it's warm weather outside, you give it a twist and wait until it just starts to come out and then you turn it back so that the pressure is off and then it won't keep coming out. Um, I learned that tip the hard way one year when I came into my craft room and I had a lot of putty across my desk. And then we will put this one there, I think. So then we can add a sentiment. Um, if you wanted to, you can leave it plain. I'm not going to put a sentiment on this because I don't know what this card's gonna be used for yet. Um, but I'm stamp set two completely different cards out of it. Um, it was really quick and really easy and my internet has frozen. There we go. We're back. Um, so I hope that you'll try one of these techniques. If you do and you love it, um, I really love it if you would post it uh, over on either my VIP group, which is Prairie Sky Crafters, or on my book page, Prairie Sky DIY. As always, I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you have any questions, comment. I'm always checking. I always reply to my comments um, on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you don't get tricked today and I'll see you again really soon. Have a great day.